Hey guys, this is Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and today we are doing the craziest setup ever. We're trying to shoot portraits in a pool, in a fish tank. What could go wrong, right? Video is sponsored in part by ACDC and their image editing suite Photo Studio Pro 2020. Photo Studio Pro is a powerful imaging editor that allows you to quickly and easily process your raw files, clone out imperfections, and catalog all of your images with keywords and geotagging. By utilizing your computer's graphic processor, Photo Studio Pro offers some of the most state-of-the-art editing tools such as non-destructive color grading, blended cloning, and LUT mapping and editing. One of the coolest features with Photo Studio Pro is their improved face detection and facial recognition engine. Now you can organize and edit your images based on the people in your photos. ACDC will learn the names of the people in your images and you can sort and edit your entire catalog based on the subject's name. If you've just picked up a camera and are looking for a simple image editor, or if you're a seasoned professional needing to simplify your existing workflow, ACDC's Photo Studio Pro could be the perfect software for you. At the end of this video, I'm gonna be editing a few of my own images from this photo shoot, but if you wanna get a free trial of your own, head over to the description and the link below. So a lot of people think you have to buy an expensive underwater house to be able to shoot in a pool and the truth is I just bought this aquarium for like 15 bucks at Walmart and for this type of photo shoot I think this is gonna work actually better than an underwater housing and the reason for that is when you put your camera underwater and you have a dome right up against the lens you're not gonna be able to really see that water line but if you can move the camera several inches maybe even a foot away from the glass you're going to make that water line a lot more pronounced and so that's what I'm trying to do today. I'm trying to shoot an image where we have crystal here above the water with all the snorkel gear, but then you see just a little bit under the water to give you the impression that the camera is actually submerged under the surface. Now, because we're in a pool and having a microphone in here would be very difficult, I'm using the Rode Go microphone on my hat. I have this dead cat to keep all of the wind from blowing across the microphone. Hopefully it sounds pretty good. For cameras, I'm shooting with the Nikon D850 and I'm also using the Tamron at 24 to 70. I like this lens a lot because any wider than 24 and your subject's gonna become really distorted. And also I can't shoot a whole lot wider because then the top of this aquarium will start showing up in my frame. So I'm finding that I'm shooting a lot between 24 millimeters and maybe 50 millimeters. That seems to be the sweet spot. I've also put a bunch of sandbags and bricks inside this aquarium so that it naturally sinks a little bit it's a lot harder pushing this down with your own weight than you would imagine. So instead of fighting this, I've just filled it up with these sandbags. Keep in mind, you're gonna want black sandbags because any of these logos can reflect off the glass, especially if you're shooting in the middle of the day when the sun's a lot higher in the sky. Now this pool is just deep enough that if we were to stand in it, we're gonna have the water line really high up against our necks. So in order to get Crystal in the right position, I've actually submerged this table that gives us a couple extra feet so that she can kneel, she could stand. It just allows us to have a lot more options. The problem with the table is I have to be very careful how I shoot because I will see the table. I might be able to fix this with a gradient and post by making the underwater segment a little bit darker, but you do want to take that into account. Maybe I could put a black blanket over it or something, but I have a white table for the time being. Now for lighting, I'm using the Westcott FJ400. This is a battery powered strobe. The reason you're gonna to wanna to use battery is because if this was run by AC and fell in the pool, that would be very, very bad. So this is great. It does about 400 flash pops, I think. Now I've outfitted this strobe with the Rapid Box, which is a really cool collapsible soft box. It kind of works like an umbrella. And this light modifier is great because it produces a soft light. It also has silver inside, which gives a lot of specular highlights, which is great for the water reflections on the top of the pool. Now, originally my plan was to try to shoot right at the water line, and then maybe I could replace the sky in post-production. I may still toy with that, but at the moment, our sky looks pretty awesome. There's a chance I could get this entire shot completely done in camera. So now that you know the camera and the flash that I'm using, let's take a bunch of shots. Hopefully one of these will turn out well. Now, one of the problems that I'm having is if I dunk this aquarium and then pull it up, I have a lot of water that's accumulating on the glass. Normally, if your lens is right against the glass, it's so out of focus, you don't really notice it. But I'm trying to shoot at 50 millimeters and pull the camera back so I can really accentuate this water line. And you can see it's starting to mess up a lot of shots. So I'm finding that I'm having a lot lower of a keeper rate. So every few minutes I have to dunk the front part of the glass to clear it. And then 
It actually works best if it dries, but inevitably it's gonna keep getting wet, so keep that in mind. As I've been shooting, I also felt like I could use a little kicker light. It would just make these images look a little more dynamic by having a light coming from Crystal's left-hand side. So for my kicker light, I'm basically just using another FJ400. The other thing that's incredibly useful for this is using live view. And so I'm turning live view on. That's allowing me to see my frame perfectly. And then I can autofocus through the glass and then take a picture and then I can see it instantly. If you had a mirrorless camera, it would probably be a lot easier than using a DSLR, but you're definitely not gonna be able to shoot through the viewfinder. So for these examples here, I'm finding they look a lot better shooting telephoto. And as the light drops, I can start to raise my ISO so I can start to let a little bit more ambient light in. But when I do that, I also have to lower the power of my strobe. And right now I'm kind of at that sweet spot where everything's balancing out, but I'm also at the lowest power. So any darker, and I'm gonna to start to have too much flash and the image is gonna to start to look very different than what it looks right now. Here in a minute, I'm gonna to have to take pictures only with strobe and so I'm gonna to start to lose the mixture of ambient light with strobe and the pictures are gonna look very different. They'll probably still look cool, but right now I gotta shoot a lot because this is the time to be photographing. All right, so we got some great shots. I'm losing my light. Let's head into post-production and see if I can edit one of these pictures and create something worthy of my portfolio. All right, so here we are back in the post-production studio, and I'm gonna go ahead and load my favorite RAW files from the shoot in ACDC's Photo Studio Professional 2020. Again, you can head to the link in the description below to download your own copy if you wanna try this on your own. Let's come down here to these RAW files, and here you can see about eight different photos that I've called. Let me go ahead and uh, hit view here so we can see some of these. So here's our first image, and as you can see, ACDC has outlined Crystal's face with a little box. If I just come down here to this little square called the face tool, I can now come in here. I can just type in Crystal Examery. I don't know how to say her last name very well, but I can hit enter. And then now as I go through each one of these images, it asks, is this Crystal? And I can hit yes, which is really cool because now I can categorize my images based on the model's name. So if I wanna look through thousands, maybe even millions of images that I've taken over my career, I can uh, just type in somebody's name and find it instantly. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's look quickly at some of my favorite images from this photo session. Here's one where I actually shot just above water, so you can see it doesn't really have that split view, but I did like the way this looks. You also have the two lights set up with the Westcott lights, one firing from the left and one firing from the right. You can see some of the shadows being cast on her arm here from the right. If I go to the next image, this is a completely natural light shot. So let's come over here to our general tab and let's bring the exposure up on Crystal's face so that it matches a correct exposure. I think I'm also gonna have to bring up the warmth looks very, very cool. And then I probably will also bring up some of the tint to get rid of that green cast. Something like this is pretty nice. And then I'm just gonna quickly go through and add some saturation. Something like that looks pretty good. So what I wanted to show with this image is the difference between natural light and then lighting with strobes. This image has no artificial light added at all. And you can see her face is really nice. It's very airy. This has a cool commercial editorial look that I love as well. In fact, many times I will shoot natural light and then also shoot with strobes so that I have both looks. But as you can see, my sky has gone pure white, which would be nice if I wanted to cut her out and use her in a composite. But if I wanted to capture the sunset behind her, shooting without strobes would make that near impossible. Now, if I came up here to general and I tried to bring the highlights all the way back. As you can see, we just have too much exposure in the sky, and if I try to bring back the highlights, it also crushes the exposure on her. So that's why strobes are so nice. So if we go to the previous image, you can see the strobes allow us to not only capture all of the highlights in the sky and the beautiful sunset, but also pull our model out of the shadows. So this is a great example of why it's great to be able to use strobes and natural light, depending on your situation. This next image is another shot just above the water. I mean, my camera is sitting right at the water line and I had Crystal kind of get low and just give me a completely different look without her body out of the water. I think this is really cool. As you can see here in our info palette, I was shooting at ISO 50, 2.8, right at my sync speed of 1 200th of a second. And for this particular image, I was shooting at 58 millimeters. This is one of my favorite images from the entire shoot. And you can see this really exploits that over under look that I was going for. If I brought the camera any lower, 
in the water, I would start to see more of her lower body, but I really love this transition. As you will see in the next image, one issue you're going to face when you're photographing through a flat uh, piece of glass without a rounded port is that you're not going to always get the objects underwater to line up perfectly with the objects above water. And in many cases, you're also gonna have a virtual image that creates kind of a magnification. As you can see here, her lower body is magnified much larger than what her body is above water. And sometimes that's a little weird. If you had the round port, you would actually be able to take advantage of that. But of course, underwater housings that have the round port are many times as much or more than the actual camera you're shooting with. So if you're trying to get away with this, like I was with an aquarium, you may have some of this magnification, which depending on what your ultimate goal is, could ruin the image or could require a little bit more finessing in post-production. All right, so I think for this tutorial, we are just going to edit this image. This is probably my favorite photo out of all of them. I really love her body position and I love that I got her lower half perfectly lined up with her body and it doesn't look too warped. Maybe her hand looks a little bit larger, but I think I can tweak that just a little bit if I even wind up keeping that in there. The first thing that I wanna do is I wanna to start to play around with this raw file and bring out some of the detail. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to come up to the saturation slider and I think I'm just gonna bump up the saturation by 30%. I love the blues and the tones in this image, but maybe I could even go down to like 24, somewhere around there. Let's come up to fill light. And I don't know that the fill light is really adding a whole lot. Let's see what highlights does. Highlights are really preserving some of that sky. Kind of like the sky where it's at though. If I go too low, you can see all the highlights on her face start to get brought down. So maybe I'll just bring it up like 26. And then where I like to go is the light EQ. Now this is going to allow us to play with the shadows, midtones, and highlights as we did earlier with the natural light image. If I bring my shadows up too much, you can see it's starting to give that HDR look. I really don't like the way that looks. Let's see what our midtones do. The midtones are really bringing out a lot of detail on her cheek and her hair. So I think I can crush the shadows just a little bit and raise the midtones just a touch. If I ever want to see what I'm doing here, I can come to the deactivate group, tap that. I think that looks really nice. And if you've seen any of the other tutorials that I've done recently on the F-Stoppers channel, one of my favorite areas to tweak an image with is the color EQ, where I can actually adjust each of the colors, both by saturation, brightness, hue, and in this case, I also have a contrast slider. So here, let's play around with some of the oranges. That's gonna be her skin tone. For this, I think her skin tone is just getting a little too saturated, so I might bring that down just a touch, maybe like minus eight. And then if I bump the reds, you can see it's really playing around with her lipstick. I don't know that it makes sense for her to have really bright lips, so I might bring the red down quite a bit as well. The cyan is going to affect all of those colors on the surface of the water. Maybe I don't even really need to mess with that. And then the blues, I think the blues are what is starting to make this image feel a little too overly saturated. So I might bring the blues down to minus 20. Now let's go over to brightness and see if we can tweak these just a bit. If I bump the reds, it's giving a lot more definition in her lips. You can see what the orange does. It almost changes her skin tone entirely. I think if I bump up the orange just a touch, that looks pretty nice. The greens are affecting our plants in the background, but also some of the tones on her legs. I think that pulling them up gives a little bit more separation in the background, but also brings some nice uh, color density here in her legs. And then the cyan, it's changing things very selectively. I don't really know if I have a preference here. I don't like when I pull the cyans down. I don't like some of the tonality that are showing up here on the glass panes on the pool. But if I pull it all the way to the right, you can see it kind of smoothens this effect out. So I'm gonna leave that there and let's see what blue does. And blue really changes the effect of the water. If I go too bright with the blue, it almost feels like she's in a swimming pool. And if I bring it down just a little bit, I don't know, maybe just minus 11 is pretty nice. So something like that looks pretty good to me. Now before I leave the develop module and start to tweak some of the actual pixels, let's go up to white balance and let's see if I tweak this. If I go make it a little bit more warm, it almost feels like the sun is setting on her, which I do like that effect. If I start to bring it bluer, 
you go too blue, it obviously looks ridiculous. But if I go around 5,000, it almost starts to feel a little bit like a nighttime image, which I do like the vibe of that. But I think for this particular edit, I'm going to make it feel a little bit more like sunshine. So right there is pretty good. And then I always like to play with the tint just to see what it does. Sometimes I like the littlest bit of magenta in my images. It kind of removes some of the green cast, especially in people's skin. That looks pretty good to me. And then finally, a lot of times I'll put a little tone curve on my images. Sometimes I like to come down here and just pull the blacks down a little bit more and then bump the whites up just a touch. If I toggle this on and off, you can see the contrast that it's added. I might even just flatten out the whites just a bit. So really all I'm doing is crushing those blacks just a bit more. Something like that looks pretty good. At any given time, I can come down here to show original and you can see where we've come with this. I've brought a lot more color back. I've brought a lot more detail, especially in her skin. Now that I look at this, I might actually bring the saturation down just a touch. Maybe bump the vibrance up a little bit. And if we toggle between these two, I think that looks a little more nice. I think I like that just a bit more. I also might bring the tint down just a little bit more towards the green so it's not so purple. Something like that is pretty cool. Now let's come up to the edit module up here and we're going to be able to tweak some of the actual pixels of this image. Now the first thing that I want to do is I want to straighten this horizon. I don't like how it's crooked so to do that I'm going to come to geometry and hit the rotate module. And now using the slider I can spin my image around and using the grid I can try to line up the horizon back there perfectly. I also don't want to crop the top of her snorkel. So I'm going to change Crop Straightened Image and instead click Preserve Straightened Image. And we'll just hit Done. Now the next thing that I want to do is I need to fill in all of these white spaces with some pixels. So if I come up here to Repair Tool, Photo Studio Professional has a few different tools you're probably familiar with, such as Heal Clone and Blended Clone Tool, as well as the Smart Erase. Let's try the Heal Tool. And the way this works is I can use the wheel on my mouse to increase my tool size. And then if I hit the right side of the mouse, it samples that area. And then I can move that over and now just paint on top of the white. And normally it, it tries to fill that in. I don't know that the heel tool is going to be the best example for this since the Colors and the dynamics are so different with it being white versus the uh, the blue sky. So I'm actually going to come down here to the Smart Erase tool. And with this tool, you don't have to sample anything. You literally just paint on the pixels. I'm just going to come down here and paint the whole thing. It does need just a second to process. That actually does a surprisingly good job. I just need to retouch just a little bit of this. And come up here and get this tiny little line without hitting the snorkel. And if you have any problem areas, let's just come down here to clone and we can add the feathering all the way to 100. I'm going to increase my brush size and then I can right click and simply paint in manually any of these areas that are going to give me a little bit of trouble. All right, something like that looks pretty good. Let's hit done. And now the next thing I need to do is I just need to crop this just a little bit to get rid of these pixels down on her leg as it's going to be a little more difficult to get correct with a clone tool. And I can also tighten up my composition just a bit. I don't think I need her entire hand here, especially since her thumbnail and everything are going to a strange color. So I'm going to maybe crop this in just right about here, just above her finger line. I think that looks really nice. Now there's a few little retouches that I want to do. One is I want to fix or remove this little texture here. I believe she had some kind of pasties on. And so I'm going to come up here to the repair tool again. I'm going to see if I can smart erase just this one little shadow here. So this was actually shot with a body glove rash guard. And so if we were shooting for a clothing manufacturer, we would probably want to remove this little bit here. So I'm just using the smart erase tool. Let's see how that does. When using these tools, a lot of times you also want to uh, really pay attention to the direction that you're dragging your brush. Sometimes it makes sense to go up and down and then other times it makes sense to go left and right. And you also want to make sure that you don't get any of the same patterns showing up. 
So not only are you looking for texture, but you're also looking for color. And let's come down here and we can zoom out full size. And as we look at that, I feel like that looks a lot better if we hit show previous. I feel like that just cleans up the neoprene and just makes it look a little bit more clean for a commercial look. Final thing I wanna do is I just want to zoom in here, see if there's anything with crystal skin that I'd like to retouch. Now, crystal has unbelievable skin, but it's always nice to remove any little blemish just to give it a final polished look. So let's come up here to, first let's go to skin tune. And here we can add a glow. I don't know that I really need to add a glow to her skin. Instead, I think I wanna add a little bit of smoothing. And with this tool, I like to bring the radius down quite a bit. If I bring the radius up too high to 100%, you can see it just kind of muddies the entire image. It's really messing with the shadows and highlights in a weird way. So I wanna bring this down probably to like one or two. And if I bring my glow up, you can see again, it's kind of giving a very unnatural effect here. So let's bring the smoothing down. With, with this tool, you really wanna be subtle here. I feel like that's just adding the nicest little lift. And then let's also come up to the repair tool. And for this, I'm gonna use the blended clone. I'm just gonna to try to get just these few little blemishes out. And let me try to get this one stray hair out. I'm gonna click right, right below it. And then I'm going to just paint the entire area. And let's see what that does. That actually did a really good job. Maybe I clean up just this little bit here. Sometimes with these clone tools and these skin retouching tools, it deletes all of the texture and you're left with this really plastic looking skin. I don't find that this uh, blended clone tool is doing that as much. I really like the effect it's giving. And it's so easy, I'm not having to do a whole lot with it. And I think with the highlight where that strobe hit her forehead, let's see if I can just remove a little bit of this. And just soften that a little bit. I can even come down here to her nose. And just pull that up just a little bit. I love the look of a specular softbox, but this is one of the disadvantages is many times if the makeup isn't perfect, sometimes you get this little sheen on the skin, which will accentuate any imperfection in the skin. I know she has great skin and it looks like I'm having to do a lot here, but everybody has this kind of texture when they're hit with that kind of light modifier. So let's see, something like that looks pretty good. And if I go between before and after, I know I cropped it so the image moves, but you can just see how much more pleasing that little bit of retouching I did on her forehead and on her cheek, that looks really nice. So the final thing that I think I wanna do, and I know this can be controversial for many people, is I want to go to the liquify tool. And if I go here, what I'm looking to do is just tweak the slightest little things that stick out to me. And I'm not trying to make her skinnier. I'm not trying to give her a bigger bust or anything like that. I'm not trying to manipulate reality. I'm just trying to tighten up the little things that maybe the camera kind of inaccurately portrayed in this one particular frame. So one of those areas is going to be under the water. As I said, having the flat glass in front of your lens is going to cause everything underwater to be magnified a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is just try to brush in her hands and just shrink them just a little bit. I can also pull in this leg just a touch, maybe even this leg. I'm not trying to change her body shape or anything. I'm just trying to slightly modify the way the magnification is. I think I've read that sometimes shooting with a glass port that's flat will add maybe 25% magnification. It almost makes you feel like the part underwater is 25% closer to the lens. So I think something like that looks pretty good. And then I could also really manipulate this water, maybe pull this in just a touch, just to give it some nice lines. It's really easy to go overboard with the clone tool. And I don't wanna do that. I feel like this little line right here on her arm just seems just a little strange. So I'm gonna just soften this up just a little bit. 
And then I always like to give people the best jawline possible. I know she has an amazing jawline, but it's this one little curve right here. If she turned her face just barely, it would have made a really nice sharp jawline, but because I kind of caught her juggling 10 different things as I was taking this photo, we missed that. So I'm just going to pull this in just ever so slightly. So there's our before and after. You can see I've really just kind of thinned up the water there and straightened everything out so the magnification wasn't too crazy and barely touched her jawline just to give it that little bit of pop. So we'll hit done there. And then the final thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this image kind of a final polished look. And a lot of times I like to put these color LUTs on my final images. You guys have seen me do this with a bunch of different other software. It's built right into Photo Studio Professional as well. If I come here to color LUTs, I can go down and you can see all of these different colored effects that just give your image a really stylized look. Now, most of these are way over the top, so I don't know that I would do these at 100%, but if I come up here to beige, I can also turn the opacity down maybe to like 40%, and if I show previous, you can see what it's doing. It's just adding a nice little color effect that I really like. I liked beige, and I think Tinsel was another one that looked kind of cool. So it's just super subtle, kind of gives your image a final film look. I think I'm gonna go with this beige. Let's hit done. And I think that is my final image. So the next thing I need to do is let's just export this. Let's come up to file, export. I'm going to save it in the same source. I'm gonna make this a JPEG so that I can put it online. Color space, let's make it RGB. I'm not gonna resize the image, I'm just gonna Flat up, export, boom, simple. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. This was a really fun shoot. It's always great to have Crystal come and visit us. She's an incredible model and it's fun to try something different. You saw in a previous video where I was using an underwater housing to try to get the same effect, but you can see, you can do it with just a fish tank. It does have some issues. You will get some of the distortion under the water because that glass is flat. But if you're looking to just spend 20 or 30 bucks instead of thousands of dollars, this is definitely an option that you have. If you guys want to get your own copy of ACDC's Photo Studio Professional 2020, again, head to the link in the description. You can download that. We also have a discount code if you decide to buy it. If you guys enjoy videos like this, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Also, head over to fstoppers.com for free daily content. And if you want to learn from some of the best photographers in the world, head over to fstoppers.com store where you can check out our full-length tutorials. In the meantime, I'll see you guys very soon.